Good day, good day everyone and once again we are back together, all right, your favorite uncle and we are looking at uh, the photoelectric effect. Uh, as you would know, this is the last question, uh, um, you know, on your paper one and uh, this is on the Mpumalanga prelim exam. All right, so for those of you who will be writing, of course, this continues to be your plug. And of course, we are preparing towards the final uh, exams as well. All right, so if you haven't subscribed, just make sure that you're part of the family. Just hit that subscribe button. And of course, uh, you can get in touch with us. All our contacts are on the description of this video. And of course, at the end of the lesson, just uh, hit that uh, like button. And um, yeah, just uh, give your favorite uncle a nice like there. All right. Now, um, let's look at the question quickly. So they said to us, we've got a diagram. Um, the diagram below shows a simplified photo cell. Okay, so we know there's incident light there and there's a cathode. And of course, uh, that induces a current in this case. Okay, so they say the graph below shows the relationship between the maximum kinetic energy of the photoelectrons and the frequency of light when light is shown onto the metal surface uh, of the above photocell. They say the graph cuts the x-axis at F1, which is 5 times 10 um, exponent 14, okay, uh, raised to the power of, or to the exponent 14. All right, now, so meaning that that value there, F1, is actually that frequency that's given. Now they say to us, write down the name of the physical quantity represented by F1. So please remember that when we look at this F1 value over there, this is what we call our threshold frequency, right? So that's the minimum frequency required. Um, so the name of it is just simply called the threshold frequency, or you can simply call it the cutoff frequency, threshold frequency, all right? So that is what we call that there. Okay, so they said define the term work function. So remember, this is the minimum energy required to emit electrons from a metal surface. If you allow me, ladies and gents, I won't write that down. Of course, I'm expecting you to be able to sing it at this point, right? Okay, so they say calculate the work function of the metal, okay? Um, and by the way, if you haven't really watched the full lesson on this, uh, please just go on to our playlist. I've got an entire playlist on the photoelectric effect that will also include past exam questions. It's really, really quite a simple section. All right, so they say calculate the work function of the metal. So remember, in this case, because we're given the threshold frequency, so that means that um, we'll just simply say, okay, so the work function will simply be H multiplied by F0. So in this case, that being the threshold frequency, okay? So uh, remember that is Planck's constant, okay? Um, so that, uh, um, so that's 6.63. Uh, that's minus 34 multiplied by, by the way, you're given this value, okay? Uh, the frequency, the threshold frequency, we had 5 times uh, 10 raised to the exponent 14, okay? So let's just do that as quickly as we possibly can, okay? So I've got 6.63 uh, 6 exponent negative 34, Okay, and that is multiplied by 5 uh, exponent 14. Okay, so I get that value 33.15. And of course, to some of you, you, can, you may get 3.31, okay, or 3.32, okay, uh, times 10 to the minus 19. Okay, in my case, I've got negative 20. That's exactly the same thing. Please don't be alarmed, all right? It's just that obviously my calculator is based on engineering mode. Okay, so um, that's our threshold, uh, our, our work function in this case. And then they say to you, calculate the frequency F2 uh, on the graph. Now I want you to note, 
um, in this case, the, trish, uh, the, the, the frequency F2 is when the kinetic energy of the electrons were at uh, 11. Remember, this is times 10 minus 19. So in this case, I'm just simply going to say, well, E is equal to the work function plus Ek max. All right, that's our formula. Uh, but remember that E in this case, that's what we're looking. We're looking for the frequency of uh, the incident light, right? So that's going to be HF, okay? So let's say HF2, but we've already cal calculated the work function. That's 33.15 minus 20. And the kinetic energy, the maximum kinetic energy at this point was 11, okay? 11 times 10 minus 19 in this case. And of course, we're going to be calculating, uh, in this case, the, the frequency. So remember that 6.63 again times 10, negative 34 times F2, uh, which is equal to that uh, entire thing over there, right? So what I'm going to do is I am just simply going to add those two uh, and I'm going to divide by, okay, so fortunately we still have that. So that's exponent uh, negative 19. Okay, so I get that value there. Okay, and I'm going to divide everything by that Planck's constant, which is 6.63 um, exponent negative 34. Okay. Um, now, for some odd reason, I'm not able to convert, you know, that answer. Uh, okay, so let's see. That would give us... Uh, okay, I'm trying to actually get it into the right mode there. Um, okay, right. So uh, I'm, I'm not able to really get that answer. So you'd get something approximately 2.15. So that's the... Um, uh, of course, you would have divided this, this side uh, by Planck's constant, 6.63 times 10 uh, minus 34. Okay, so let me see how many decimals that is. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 14, and 15. So in this case, that would be approximately, uh, please, you can verify this for me. That's 2.15 uh, times 10 power 15 uh, hertz. Okay, right. Please just verify that for me and let me know if that is the correct answer. Okay, right. And then the final question, uh, they say to us, the intensity of the light is increased while the frequency. So note, they increase uh, intensity, right? Uh, they say while well, the frequency is kept uh, constant, how will this affect the reading on the emitter? Okay, so please remember that the reading on the emitter will increase when we increase the intensity. And the reason for that is that, remember, once you increase intensity, you will increase the number of electrons emitted per second. So our answer for 10.5 is that it will increase. So 10.5 uh, increase. Uh, if they had asked us to explain, uh, we would uh, simply state that an increase in frequency, uh, uh, sorry, an increase in intensity rather. Uh, so the increase in intensity, and please don't explain when you are not asked for, uh, uh, for an explanation, right? Increase in intensity will increase the number of electrons emitted per second. Remember, it does not increase the kinetic energy of the electrons, but rather the number of electrons emitted per second, right? Uh, per second. So in that case, when we increase the number of electrons uh, emitted, remember that current is the amount of charge divided by the time. So because you've emitted more charge in this case, uh, that will increase the amount of current that you have. 
All right, ladies and gents, and that is how the cookie crumbles. Right, I hope that you were able to enjoy this entire question paper, um, you know, and that, you know, you feel more prepared uh, towards your exams. All right, uh, all the best to all of you who will be writing. Please remember the pain of discipline is much, much better than the pain of regret. If you don't study, you'll regret it at the end and the pain will be excruciating. So please continue to work hard and uh, uh, of course, use your favorite uncle as your main plug. All right. Otherwise, from me for now, I'll see you guys next time. Shop, shop.